Carl, what would you do if you won a million pounds? Not fucking YouTube, that's for sure. No joke there. The, the honesty. People like people respect self esteem and honesty. Just, just reminds me of uh, why did you get into this business, Carl? Money. Money. I answered that three times. People yeah. still getting pissed off about it. For a lot of people, their wildest fantasy is to somehow acquire a large amount of money by doing fuck all. In 2001, a disgraced British army major almost realised this dream by going onto a British quiz show and getting a friend in the audience to cough a lot. So I don't think I've met a single British person who doesn't know this story. No, but we do have a lot of viewers from outside of Blighty, so we should talk about it in a bit more detail so we're all on the same page, because holy shit, are you in for a ride today, folks? This story is brilliant. So in 2001, a dude called Charles Ingram went on a show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which you can probably guess has a top prize of a million pounds. Before we get onto the topic of what he actually did on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, yes. I don't know who Charles Ingram actually is, just what he did. Not a lot of people do, but it's actually fascinating to like, you know, read up on him, because obviously his one sole tenuous claim to fame is the fact that he once tried to cheat a British quiz show out of a million pounds. And you think for most people, I'm going to try and hide that information about myself. I don't want that to be the first thing that pops up when someone Googles my name. Charles Ingram, though, has relished the notoriety he's gained from this to the point where, if you go on his Wikipedia page, he's released this image into the public domain. So he walked into his kitchen with his wife, posed for that fucking photo, and then went and released it into the public domain on a Wikipedia page solely dedicated to discussing what a slimy, cheating dickhead he is. Wait, hold the phone. Public domain? Oh yeah, Brad, it's in the public domain, so you can do whatever the fuck you want with this image and he has absolutely no legal recourse whatsoever because now you can do anything you want with it. So, what would you like to Photoshop this guy doing? Because there's fuck all he can do to stop us. Well, I mean, I want to put in a, like, a, little, a quick reference for the later on in the video that people are going to get. Oh yeah, because this, yeah. if people don't know, this guy whose nickname was The Coughing Major. So yeah, I think, yeah, make his wife have a big coughing head. Like, his wife is now coughing, and you know what? That jumper's pretty shit. So you know what? Make him wear the outfit that the honey monster wears. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop us. Public domain, baby. This is why you don't do this. This is why you put Creative Commons on it, dipshit. Could we, could we, like, theoretically, draw a huge penis on it and sell it on a t-shirt? Theoretically, yes, because it exists in the public domain. Yeah. We could sell that image without his permission and without giving anything to him, but we're not going to do that because it's unethical. <laughs> you put a picture on a t-shirt with this is what a dickhead looks like and sell it. You could. So if there's anyone out there who wants to do this, it's not like he can sue you. Public domain, baby. That's how it works. Man, what an idiot. That on its own is hilarious, but if you read his Wikipedia page and go down it, you'll see that he's very clearly added in some parts himself. Which he says, oh yes, in his free time, Charles Ingram likes to write shitty crime novels and occasionally helps sell his wife's jewellery online. It's like, no one cares. They're not here to read about that. <laughs> Personal life, Charles Ingram has a massive penis. Really not though, piss you off, that. This guy is better at marketing himself than we are. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has probably got more fucking business savvy than we have. Because oh, I bet you if he had a YouTube channel, I bet he'd accept sponsors. He'd be fucking on that. He'd be, he'd be shilling the shit out of Skillshare. <laughs> For cough medicine. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is though, I think he has. Because he's been on like reality TV shows and he's done adverts and stuff like that. Because obviously I like, parlay that notoriety any way you can, as long as you get some money out of it. Holy fuck, just the idea though, like, the ego needed that on the Wikipedia page talking about how much of a bell end you are, he went on it because I think originally, you can look this up because obviously you can check how many times the page has been edited, I think it was just a picture of his appearance on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, or like from like some like news article or something, he went, no nah, I don't like that and took one himself. <laughs> And presumably paid a photographer to take it because <laughs> the resolution's so massive you can blow it up super huge do you know how we're going to prove that to the audience now just blow up his face as massive as you can get in the background for a sec <laughs> that's how that's how high quality this image is imagine the thing you could get a bedspread with this on it you get a bedspread i bet you know what i bet he has got a bedspread with his face <laughs> his entire house is just pictures of his own face i won't be surprised man like how up your own ass you have to be to do that it's like your sole claim to fame is being a criminal and he doesn't pose for that photo. 
With that out of the way, let's talk about how Ingram rose to prominence. So in 2001, this guy applied to be on a show, as noted, called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? On which the top prize is, you guessed it, £1 million. <coughs> yeah. Sorry, you, you, you got it right. Yep, £1 million. Good, good take, mate. Good take. <laughs> That's a joke we could do, but I feel like it won't. It's, it's not got a lot of legs, that joke, has it? <laughs> right, we've been making jokes that from like 17 fucking years ago at this point. It'd have been great if, uh, I mean, we missed a, ch a chance at the start to have you say that you're drinking coffee for one, like, for a video. Oh, that would be a good one. I still like that every time Chris Tarrant goes on, like, um, TV shows and some people still cough in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> he says, even to this day, every time I do, like, a quiz show or like, I go host an event, I get some of the audience to come on. It's like, <laughs> so, yeah. It just gets followed around by coughing. Yeah, all the time. Maybe it's his cologne. Yeah, maybe it just smells real bad. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Poor Chris Tarrant's got really bad BO, but he just thinks everyone's having a laugh with him. <laughs> I don't think there's much point in us covering the format itself, because I think there's one of these in every country now. Yeah, it's one of the most successful like, ideas for a quiz show ever, because I think virtually every country on Earth has their own version of it, where you win like a million of whatever their currency is. Um, my favourite one of those being the one in Russia, where um, they found out that the lifeline of um, Ask the Audience was the one that everyone avoided, because the people in Russia, in the audience, would always give the wrong answer. <laughs> Without a doubt, like, statisticians have looked at it and said, like, in America, in the UK, if you ask the audience generally, because it's like the wisdom of crowds on displays, and it's like, you will get the right answer, because in like, a crowd of enough people, it, the majority of them will know it if it's like common wisdom. In Russia, they deliberately steered people towards the wrong answer. They think it's like a psychological thing. If you can't answer the question yourself, you don't deserve the money. <laughs> so in Russia, no one uses that lifeline. So back to Charles Ingram. Yes. Folks at home, as you can probably imagine, given that this guy allowed this image out into the public domain, not realising people can draw dicks on it, Charles Ingram is not a very smart man. So when he was accepted to appear on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, he realised maybe I'm not going to be able to get to the very last question on my own. So he decided to enlist the help of a seasoned trivia buff called Tequan Whitock to help him with the answers. So for people who haven't already figured it out... Yes. How did Whitock help Ingram win? He helped him by coughing. And probably people out there thinking, how do you help a guy win a quiz show by coughing? Well, that's a lot to do with the fact that Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is quite unique in the fact that every contestant is given an unlimited amount of time to answer each and every question, you know, to add to the drama. The problem with this is that it gave Ingram ample time to read out loud the answer to every single question he didn't know the answer to, which in turn would allow Whittock to loudly cough whenever Ingram said the correct answer. It's handy that the show they went on was a multiple choice quiz. Yeah, it is, because if it was just a show about like answering questions, it'd be a lot more difficult to do that. It's like, oh yeah, which king did so and so and so and go, oh, it could be Henry the First, or Henry the Second, or Henry the Third, or Henry the Fifth. <laughs> Henry the Fifth, mate, it's Henry the Fifth. Or <laughs> oh, just in the in the in the uh, audience going <laughs> in Morse code. <laughs> the thing is though, like, that's not that far out of the realm of possibility because there are other people who've tried to cheat who wants to be a millionaire out of money. It's just that like Ingram's the most famous because he's the one who got a million quid. I think there was a guy who turned up and put like four mobile phones strapped to his body. Um, and like one was for A, one was for B, one was for C, one was for D. And whenever someone got the right, whenever he was on the right answer, someone just text that phone to him vibrate. And another one that cracks me up is, there was a huge epidemic of whenever anyone got accepted to appear on the show, they wouldn't like, for the phone a friend lifeline, they wouldn't nominate a mate, they'd just go to like pub quiz champions and ask them. <laughs> and I am disappointed that this show didn't air, or it wasn't popular at least, around the same time as The Chase is. Cause I loved someone to have just gone, who's your phone a friend then? The Beast. <laughs> and just go up, the fucking Beast. And if people don't know what we're talking about, The Beast is a fucking, like, the word absolute unit was coined to describe this man. Because holy fuck, I've met him. He's fucking terrifying. You've met the beast? I've, I was near him. I served him when I was working in an event once. He was sat down, he's as tall as I am. I'll put it that way. And people were posing for photos with him, the country's fucking like, he's there. It's terrifying. Such a huge man. I was caught literally in his orbit the entire night. I can't remember what the other ones are called. Um... It was the beast. It's the only one anyone gives a shit about, he's the best one. 
Can we just for a moment stop and talk about how fucking awesome of a nickname The Beast is? It's like, there are boxers out there who don't get nicknames that fucking cool, and this guy's a pub quiz champion. Imagine being so dominant at pub quiz as your nickname, The Beast. I actually got a list of the chasers up. I didn't realise these were the names of them. Okay, go so for it. So you've got Mark Labette, The Beast. The Beast. You've got uh, Anne Hegarty, who's the governess. Oh, he's the governor. I thought it was the Duchess, sorry. Then you've got Jenny Ryan, The Vixen. <laughs> the Vixen. Paul Sinner, the Cinnaman. <laughs> that sounds too close to cinnamon. <laughs> That's not as terrifying. It's like, who do you want to fight? The do you want to fight Cinnaman, who sounds like precious cinnamon bun, or the beast? I don't want to fight Cinnaman. It's like that scene in fucking Avatar, isn't it? It's like, who do you want to fight, Ang? Who do you want to fight? And it's like, all these huge big buff dudes. Because I'll fight you, King Boomy. And he's like this old ass man and he rips the shirt off and he's super buff. He's like, oh no, no King Boomy, please. Don't earth then with your face. There's one more as well. The, oh, final, on, the final chaser. Okay, who is it? Uh, Sean Wallace, the Dark Destroyer. Yeah, that's the black guy in it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he got to pick that nickname? Because if he didn't, I'd be, I'd be like, oh, I'm not saying that one. It's like... I've, I watched the show. I love the chase. It's like chase the chase is Bradley so Walsh, like national treasure right there. That guy's my hero. But it's the idea that when he comes out, he goes, oh, you're fighting the Dark Destroyer. And he just shows this completely stoic face. And this really burly black dude. It's like, I bet you don't call him that in the changing room. <laughs> when you're getting makeup done, you do not call him that. Oh. Just the Dark Destroyer. That's like back in the day they used to call like black boxers the black terror. It's like, what? As if having the entire collective knowledge of an entire second person at his disposal in a show designed to test one person wasn't dickish enough, Ingram also went right ahead and clued his wife into the series of coded coughs he and Wicks could come up with so she could help him too. So basically three people were taking part in that show and they just managed to scrape by and win a million quid. Well, I mean, considering that the the more in the seat probably couldn't answer any of them, I'm assuming it was two people in the show. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the thing that cracks me up though is that Tequan Wittock actually did appear on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and he won a thousand quid. I don't remember it being particularly subtle the way they did it either. Oh no, they were brazen as fuck. People are currently thinking, oh man, they must have at least tried to be subtle about it. No, they fucking weren't. Because in the broadcast of the episode, like Ingram's wife could be seen coughing on fucking camera. Like she coughs on camera. I think at one point she even coughs and says the word no when she coughed by accident on the wrong answer. <laughs> that actually happened. I think they did a documentary about it, which he criticised for saying, oh yeah, they raised the volume of the coughs. It's like, well, yeah, because they're using your microphone and they weren't designed to get the coughs of people in the audience. And you can hear him just go, uh, no. <laughs> it's, that, it's that blatant. It's like only fools and horses, like knocking over like 40,000 tins. Like, meow. <laughs> Fucking hell. And the thing is, they go away with it. It worked. They won a million quid. And I'm just thinking, how flaccid do you think the guy who came up with the idea of strapping mobile phones to his arsehole felt? When he asked, I could have just got my mum in the audience to cough when I got the wrong answer. <laughs> it's like, it was that simple. You almost have to respect how simple an idea it is and to have gotten away with it. So you know what I do now? What? I just put Siri on. Just have it on the side next year. It's like, oh, wait, what's, what's the capital of uh, this particular country? Read out the answer. It's just, the answer is... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's... <laughs> no, you know what I do? Um, like, I'd be like those girls who got caught cheating an exam a couple of years ago um, where they're wearing a hijab and they put a Bluetooth earpiece in <laughs> and they have the mate read the answers out to them. Oh, and they go, like, you always hear stories like that, don't you? Another one that always cracked me up was um, girls in school would write the answer on their legs and then they wear tights and then to read the answer, you just stretch your tights out. Oh, that's clever. So you can see through the tight and then you let it go because, as well... What teacher in their right fucking mind is going to admit to staring at a teenage girl's legs? No fucker. It's genius. Don't do this at school, kids. We're not encouraging cheating. We just we respect the hustle of people who put more effort into cheating than they do revising. There's the one that I always remember where uh, you unscrew your pen and put paper inside the pen and then screw the top back on. Oh, when smartwatches first became a thing, people putting PDF documents on the Apple Watch and zooming in to read it and then tapping the button to turn it back into a watch. Or... The, um, the Bluetooth calculators that they used to sell. Like, oh yeah, girl gear. Chat to your friend when you're in class. And people just used to send fucking answers to each other with a Bluetooth bright pink calculator. Oh man. 
Do you ever have one of those exams where they let you take in the guy, like the course book with you? Oh yeah. That was weird. My favourite story about that is, um, it's probably like, you know, something that's been passed down is not actually that true, but it was, oh yeah, anything, you can, you can only take one thing into the exam, so one guy took in a, like, a grad student and got him to see the exam for him. <laughs> or the famous one of like, you can, take in, um, you can only take in photocopies of the relevant material, so one guy photocopied the entire fucking book and took that in. Little loopholes like that always crack me up, but most of them are just like those stories you hear in email chains. That you go onto Snopes and go, oh, it's not real. Oh, thanks, Snopes. It's amazing how much people online don't check something before they share it. Yeah, it isn't. It's weird that. You, th you think people would be more like, you know, especially with a massive audience, they'd be like, you know, more, like, you know, concerned with accidentally, like, you know, sharing something dangerous. Or harmful, like, you know, or corrosive to like, you know the ideals that like, they they hold dear to themselves. Welcome to the extended cut, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming, seeing as we've got this entire video today, that he didn't get the million. No, he won it, and then I think there was an investigation launched afterwards, um, because obviously accusations of cheating were levied by people in the audience who said the guy next to me was like coughing whenever he was reading out the answers. That's a bit suspicious. I'm not sure if we'll be able to track it down, but there is a fascinating clip from a documentary where they play the actual phone call where they called Ingram up and told him that he wasn't going to get the million pounds because they were investigating, like, you know, accusations of cheating. And he just answered someone and goes, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> it's like, if, he was, if he'd not cheated, he would have gone bananas in that phone call. He would have gone fucking... Eight. And he's like, the fact that he just goes, oh, okay. He's like, that is on its own, is the most blatant admission of guilt. The fact you are not at all annoyed that you are being denied a million pounds you honestly won on national TV. Surprise, you just go, oh, gosh, darn it. Oh, gently, just turn oh, it to... Oh, gee, uh, golly. <laughs> just turn it to fix it, Felix. So I'm assuming that every single one of them denied it happened. Oh, yes, all three of them unequivocally disavowed any accusations of cheating, especially Whittock, who, when they asked him, so, Mr. Whittock, we've got footage here of you coughing every single time he gets the right answer. How do you explain that? And Whittock said, uh, it's just coincidence. I've had a persistent racking cough my entire life. I can't help it. I mean, it's a stretch, but coincidences do happen. They do, they don't. Then it, it may have been a coincidence that he just so happened to cough when Ingram said the right answer out loud three times in a row. But we should point out that Whittock himself also appeared on like, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire later. And he only won a thousand pounds, by the way, because fuck him. And uh, his cough had mysteriously disappeared. And can we just for a moment, it's like, you know, appreciate and respect the size of the balls it takes to say a lie like that when you know there is literal video evidence of you out there not doing the thing you said you did. So, oh no, I've suffered with a cough my entire life. Well, we've got the unedited raw cut of the three hours you were on the show yourself and you never coughed once. How do you explain that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and there was another one as well. It was like, okay, maybe I didn't need to cough that day, but you've got no evidence that I knew the answer to any of the questions on that show. And they said, well, you're a seasoned trivia buff. And yeah, well, I didn't know the answer to the specific questions asked that day. And, oh, okay. So here's a notebook we found in your house, and this bit's true, um, where you've written down various pieces of trivia in your handwriting, including a bit that's underlined, which is the answer to one of the questions that appeared on the show that Ingram said out loud that you coughed on the right answer for, that you are now claiming you don't know. They had video evidence and handwritten notes, and he's still saying, but I just didn't do it. I, I just, there's nothing more. I can't think of a scenario as dumb as that. You sat there in court and there's a guy there. Well, I didn't know the answer to any of those questions. Here's a handwritten notebook with the answer to the question in it written by you. Yeah, I, just, I didn't know it though. <laughs> <laughs> so you, at that point, you just give up, don't you? I think that's what he was hoping out. If you just kept saying that, I just didn't do it. Oh. So did they throw the book at him? They probably did, yeah. Oh, I like that one. We are approaching Shaggy-esque levels of denial here, how we? It's like, I caught you. Your dick was inside the neighbour. Wasn't me. Like... <laughs> one of my favourite tweets of all time... So good. Oh. One of my favourite tweets of all time came from Shaggy, where, like, it was a couple of years back or something, he tweeted out, I can't hold it anymore. It was me. <laughs> Well played, Shaggy. Well played. What about Ingram's wife? 
Well, she also flatly denied any wrongdoing whatsoever, and she was a bit smarter than Whittock was when it came to defending herself, because she didn't say, I've had a persistent racking cough my entire life. She said, I had a sore throat that day, and that's a lot harder to disprove. But as cast iron as that defence is, I should probably point out that, you know, Ingram's wife had appeared on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire before, and thus had insider knowledge of how the show works. Yes, all three of the people involved in this all appeared on the show. You can't make this shit up. Do you know how much she won? £32,000. And apparently that wasn't enough for them. They won 32 grand. I want to know, who vets these shows? Because they went on with the same fucking last name. <laughs> and she won. It's not like she won like a grand. She won £32,000. Like, 2001 money. That's a lot of money. You got a deposit on a fucking house right there. Um, as you can probably guess, folks, um, the courts didn't buy this story and found Ingram guilty of uh, this crime right here. And he didn't get his million pounds, and he was really upset about it. And since then, Ingram has flip-flopped between saying that being on the show has ruined his life, while simultaneously trying to cash in on his notoriety to sell books or his wife's shitty handmade jewellery. So if he claims it ruined his life, I assume that he'd have learnt his lesson and not done anything like that again. Oh, right, yeah, that is like, you know, he's committed to being a better person and like, he's sick and tired of like the one thing he's known for being, like, you know, a cheat on this show when he's like grown as a person since then. You know, that could be the case if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, two years later he was accused of insurance fraud <laughs> and found guilty after he tried to like claim 30 grand or some shit from his insurance for like the fourth time in a year. And after that, because um, he was a major in the army, the army's like, fuck this, we're, like, we're taking away your commission. You're not a major anymore, fuck you. <laughs> to be honest, it sounds like he kind of deserved that. Yeah, because he was accused of being a cheat and a fraud, and I'm guessing the army was okay with him being one of those, but not both. And as a final note for anyone who's a fan of, how's that word pronounced? Schadenfreude? Schadenfreude. Well, that word there, um, it may also interest you to know that a couple of years after that, Ingram accidentally cut off three of his toes after slipping on an apple. <laughs> so, I the victory! I wouldn't ordinarily laugh at something like that, but fuck you, dude. Justice has been served. So that video was a bit wordy for us, wasn't it? Yeah, thanks for sticking with us through it, folks. It was a pain in the ass to record. <laughs> and a pain in the ass to edit. I imagine future Brad will enjoy. Yeah. So let's just do something dumb at the end. Okay. I reckon, uh, do you know any really bad Christmas cracker jokes? Oh, I know a shit ton of bad Christmas cracker jokes. People hate me for my bad Christmas cracker jokes. So I've got a load memorised. Do you want to hear some, Brad? Go for Folks it. Folks at home, okay, what do you call a guy with a spade in his head? I don't know. Doug. What do you call a guy without a spade in his head? Not Doug. Douglas. Oh, what sake. do you call a guy with paper pants? What? Russell. What do you call a guy who's like, you know, um, can swim with no arms or legs? No idea. Clever dick. What do you call a guy who can swim with no arms, legs or a penis? Smart I... ass. <laughs> what do you call a deer with no eyes? Oh, I've no idea. Yeah, what do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Still no idea? What do you call a deer with no eyes, no legs, chewing on a razor blade? I don't know this one. Still no bloody idea. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right, let's change tack for a bit, Brad. Have you heard about the new book, How to Fight Tigers? I haven't. You haven't? No, it's written by a guy called Claw Balls. What about the book, My Life as a Russian with Three Testicles? I don't know. You know it's written by Hujanik Bolokov. I really recommend it. <laughs> What about the what about the new guide on how to steal cars in Tokyo by Tommy Tokamoto? You heard about that one? No. <laughs> what about the one of um, uh, Indi Indian carpentry for beginners? I met a shed. <laughs> These are great. These are how you tell jokes with a racial slant without being offensive dick ones. It's not hard. Let's try a different direction, right? I'm okay. going to feed you at the start of a joke. Let's see if you can guess the punchline. Okay. All right, we'll start with... Right, background in comedy, let's go. <laughs> what do you call Santa's little helpers? I don't know. Subordinate clauses. That's fucking awful. That's horrendous. You should feel bad. <laughs> How does Darth Vader like his Christmas turkey? I don't know, on the dark side. On the dark side? I bought my son a fridge for Christmas. It's really cool. <laughs> no, I can't see, wait to see his face light up when he opens it. Oh, right, yeah. I got a good one. It's like, uh, I bought my friend an elephant. He said, oh, well, thank you, went on. Don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I should tell the story of the irrelevant. No, do not tell the story of the irrelevant elephant. <laughs> Shut up, Brad. No. What did Cinderella say when her photos didn't arrive on time? 
I don't know. What did one, she say? One day my prince will come. <sighs> That's pretty bad. It is, isn't it? <laughs> what do you call a naughty child who doesn't believe in Santa? I don't know. What a do rebel call- without a clause. Here's, here's one for you. Why is Santa's sack so full? I don't know. He only comes once a year. You know what, though, Brad? I don't think any of these jokes appeal, you know, to the teenage, edgy, meme lord crowd. So should we end with one offensive joke? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll tell you my most offensive joke, and that is, what's brown and runs around a garden? I don't know. Offence. Hey! Da, 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 da. Jokes your dad used to tell. Just want to, just want to clarify for these people watching the extended edition. We've just started a fresh recording, just so Carl can tell that one joke. That's a good joke, that.